Hi there. Today I'm really excited to tell you all about the new Realink CX810 with night color vision and 4K. So having a look at the stats on this camera, it's got a 4K 8 megapixel and it's a power over ethernet camera. It's got an f1.0 super aperture lens as well as person, vehicle and animal detection. So it's got the special Color X night vision which we're going to have a look at but it also has these little spotlights if you want to go for a lighting option and this will also work as a deterrent by coming on when it spots motion. So having a look at the camera itself, it's in a really nice metal housing which has been powder coated. It comes with this ball mount for mounting it to the side of your house or your surfeet. Um, on the underside over here, we've got the micro well microphone over there and the speaker over there. So if we and turn on the lights here, you'll see we've got four really bright LEDs. These are really great for illuminating your pathway if you're coming home or basically for alerting someone that the camera is on. But for actual night vision, they are not needed because as you'll see, the night vision is fantastic. Um, so attached to this device, we have a cable with three items. We have one, which is our um, ethernet, power over ethernet coming in there. If you're not using power over ethernet, you can use your normal uh, power supply and then we have a reset switch over here. So the device was really easy to connect. I just plugged it into my router and used the supplied power supply. Next up I wanted to connect to Home Assistant. Opened up Home Assistant and it was discovered immediately. Um, opened up the login there and it asked for the admin password. So I put the admin password that I'd already loaded onto the camera it then popped up the screen asking for the password again. So I put the password in again, put the port 80 and went submit. But I kept coming up with this error. Now after doing some research, I discovered that I needed to go and enable the streams within the settings of the device. So I went down here to network, advanced and server settings. And what I've done is I've enabled all of these streams at the moment probably a good idea to go and work out exactly which one was needed but I've just enabled them all for now and that solved the problem. Now this really blew me away the moment I saw all the things that are exposed to Home Assistant. So we can adjust our floodlight on and off, we can select the siren, um, we've got our stream over here, um, we can go in there and we can get our um, detection alerts based on motion of person, vehicle, animal, or just motion. If we scroll down here, we can actually adjust the sensitivity of each of these individually. We can adjust the email on event. Um, we can also select how the auto uh, floodlight mode is working. We can go here and adjust the um, sensitivity. We've got the uh, motion sensitivity there, push notifications, record, siren on event, volume. This is just fantastic. So having a look at our cameras, you can see this is my old Realink, the 510WA, and you can see it's still quite dark here this morning at 7am. If we switch, switch over to the CX-810, there we go. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? And that is just the color night vision without any of the lights on. If we now turn the light on, you can see the spotlight is on now. It's lighting up my car in the front there, but honestly, we don't need the light at all. You can see we turn it off. Look at that fantastic image compared to your standard nighttime vision. So we can see here if we start zooming in, we've got pretty good zoom. Not quite able to read that um, number plate over there, but we can pan around. As you can see, we've got some pretty amazing view with this nighttime vision. We can drill right into these photos, pretty amazing. So having a look at our daytime vision, you can see there we've got a car alerts coming up there from the cars passing on that main road there. If we start diving into this, have a look, if we zoom in, look at that, we can read that number quite easily over there. 
Um, it is just a fantastic picture. Once again, if we compare that to the old 510 WA, you can just see the difference in the quality. You can hear the difference in the sound. The um, sound on this is a lot clearer, a lot less wind noise. So we have our settings over here. So if we go into settings, we can go and have a look at what we've got. So first of all, on display, we can do the normal flipping. Um, we can stream over there. Uh, we've got HDR, so that's automatically, but we can also select that on or off manually if we prefer. We've got our brightness setting over here, so you can see this will adjust that nighttime vision, which as you see is pretty spectacular. Have a look at that. Quite amazing what the guys have done here. So next up, we've got our audio. So over here, we can select how loud we can go that we want to record audio and we can run a sound test if we want to. We've then got our light, our spotlight with this device. So we've got a setting for the brightness there. And if we go into modes, we can either have it on a timer coming on at certain times or we can go with auto mode, which will adapt to the brightness or we can go with smart mode. Smart is I what I want, so we can actually select what we want to detect. So what I want to do is I want to detect when a person comes onto my property at night and turn the light on. I don't want it to be affected by the vehicles going past during the day and setting this off continually. If we go back along here, our detection alarm. So once again, here we can select a non-detection note zone if we want to. Um, we can also go with a delay. So setting how long it's going to wait to alarm based off a person. So I'm going to say one second, I want to get an alarm for a person coming onto my property. We can also select the object size um, go from a minimum object to a maximum object. So that's pretty cool. I'll just cancel out of that. Um, then if we scroll down, we've got our camera recording, which is on at the moment. I haven't yet put a SD card into the camera, but I will be doing that to check up on the recordings. Uh, further on down, we've got our push notifications. So this will notify directly on your phone. So I've got them switched on at the moment, and I can go and I can set up critical alerts through my phone if I want to. Um, we've also got different ringtones from Classic, uh, Soft, Joy, etc. Uh, next up, we've got our uh, email alert, so you can set it up, so it will send you an email the moment you get an alert. Uh, we've got our FTP settings as well. Uh, we've got the siren. I'm not going to put that on, but you can allow it to have a siren when it detects someone coming onto your property. Well, overall, I'm really impressed with this camera. The picture quality is amazing, but the most incredible thing I'm seeing is the level of integration that's now appearing between Home Assistant and these real link cameras. So anyway, if you've enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye for now.